All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here is how to start an old-fashioned chimney charcoal grill, or just a charcoal grill in general. I'll screw that up in editing later, but anyway, okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a full bag of your intended flavored target. Of course, one-handed because they're all natural like that. Make sure all the copper pieces are in there too. Mm. Toss that off to the side. Kick, kick. Now these are the Duraflame Insulite ones, the ones with all the pre-packed lighter fluid, but we're gonna bypass that. And instead, we're gonna go kind of old school. Old, old school, new school-ish. Normally you would want to light a fire you know, underneath something that kind of you know burns to the top because uh, this is kind of like a log flume or a, or, or a chimney per, uh, per se so you're gonna set that bad boy right there take these two guys let's make sure they're right, right and good and some people like to separate and my, my personal preference is just kind of light I set I kind of put the one that lie. And then forget the matches for everything. Always. Jeez. There you go. Uh, three of these uh Duraflame fire starter cubes. And we're going to kind of uh give this a go. So, we should look, boys and girls. One. Here we go on the first light, let it kind of catch a little bit. There we go. And then, we're going to set the chimney on top of said flame up. Remove for great airflow. <coughs> And I'll be back with you in about 15 to five minutes. Chimney, could have heard I swore uh, Dick Van Dyke screaming back there. Yeah, no, it's always good when you have flames with off your chimney. Mmm, crusty. Yeah, so basically what happens here is air comes into the bottom up on top right here and just kind of wicks up and causes uh, the flames to be induced up on top. And that's how you ignite all your charcoals at once. So, tip for your home gamers, do that. Now, another thing you could do while the fire is burning nice and hot is add a little bit of kindling to the mixture, and you'll get rid of all your trash, what have you. Don't do this in the forest because you get the chance of, you know, breeze ups and what have you. So, hold on one second. is good for the environment it's good for you I got no strings to hold me down there we go baby feed yourself girl what we like as you can see we have a nice kind of kind of charring effect happening like right around here right around there Ooh. <laughs> I'm a welder you can tell uh, anyway um yeah no uh you want you want a little bit of a gray film on the charcoals before you dark before you dump them into the uh to the batch be with you short, shortly I'd like everyone to take an appreciational view of like what, what I'm seeing out here. Okay. 
Vacation time. Ain't that awesome? Gotta love it. All right, boys and girls, moment of truth. We have a nice flame going on. Make sure that you use some sort of carrying device because it's going to be hot. Oh boy. Ugh. Ow. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to divide the coals evenly on one side versus the other. For indirect heat. That's the methodology I'm using for these guys. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a scraper here. Come on, y'all. There we go. Then place grate on top of pan. Let heat for a little bit. Grab relatively abused scraping spatula. There we go. And set up for a little bit to induce heat right around 350 degrees or 400. Depends on your liking. All right, we have achieved our normal operating temperature of right around 350 to 400. Time to go on. Now I like to, I like to place these guys a little bit in the center for about a one inch. Cook for a good 15 minutes ish. Or until I feel like it. Alright, now if your temperature goes above your intended cooking time, don't panic. Simply remove said lid and let it breathe a little bit. Get that heat going off. Get that get that nice temperature flux. That's that's when someone goes, oh shoot. My steaks are burning. What do I do? Well, you just simply turn them. What does that do? It changes the heat style. There we go. Leave that off for a little bit. And while we're at it, we can insert a temperature probe. Always insert the temperature probe in the, ver in the medius one. At halfway in center, and then if the batteries, thank you, for a little bit two things we don't want flame and we don't want excessive heat other than that we want to slow and low also another trick for you also another trick for you home gamers when meat gets hot on one side and the thermometer is a little bit too close to the actual heating surface flip it over you know, see how that how that rolls for you. I mean, I'm going from 145 degrees down to 102. I've changed my meat pro from the outside to the inside, but we have a nice 102 degrees and, you know, nice drippage going on right here. You know, rotate in about five minutes and that should be a decent medium. Thank you, guys. Second rotation, we have a nice 
glaze on everything, uh, separating a little bit over here. We have good tendency to it. Let's grab that little guy right there and see what kind of madness we're going. Okay, that's about medium rare ish. That's about medium. A medium. I like it. Beautiful. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, have a wonderful night and um, peace out. And then afterwards, boys and girls, you let your coals die out or, you know, you spray some water on them and kind of go from there. But I prefer to let my coals die out. Saves, you know, water and what have you. But you know what? Uh, I'm going to go in for a beer or five. Later, guys.